Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for getting on your yoga mat to practice yin today. My name is Kelly Skinner, if we haven't met, and I'm really excited to um, guide you through your practice today. So you can move to your mats and make sure that you have props um, nearby. So you might have a yoga block, you might not. So you could gather some blankets or pillows um, from your couch or your bed. If you have a bolster, right? anything you could use here um, to support you in your practice. And we'll start seated just for a brief meditation. So prop your hips up on something and find a comfortable seat. So that might look like this, right? Sitting with your legs crossed. That might look with like your knees in front of you, your feet back, and you could sit even higher, giving yourself more height, whatever you need to do. Or if you'd prefer to take this meditation lying down on your back, right? You can do that, really honor what you need today. And then come into stillness once you've found your seat. And then you can rest your hands in your lap or on your thighs, palms facing down or up. And we'll just take inventory here. So let's begin our practice today with a body scan. Starting with your awareness in your head, right? the crown of your head. And allow your awareness to begin to wash down the features of your face, right? Unwrinkle your forehead, let your eyelids be heavy, the skin around your cheeks drape. There will be a little separation between the two rows of your teeth. Let your jaw soften. Right? And when you release your jaw, you may feel a little widening in your inner ears. And bring your awareness to your throat, softening through your throat and your neck. And draw your shoulders up towards your ears then back towards your spine, and then down your back. Funneling your awareness down both arms and through your wrists into your hands, and just letting your arms be heavy here, supported by your lap or thigh. Bring your awareness to your torso, both your front and back body, starting in your chest and upper back. Notice any tension in your upper back. Notice space around your heart. As your shoulders fall, your chest can lift. Notice your belly and mid back. Perhaps start to notice the movement of your breath in your belly, and then in your low back, mid back. And bring your awareness down to your seat, right to your pelvis, the space around your tail and your sacrum, your hips. Notice any gripping, right? That's just part of our conditioning or your habits. Just see if you can soften. And let your awareness wash down both legs and knees through your ankles into your feet. Softening the lower part of your body. I'm feeling your whole body as a feel the radiant sensation here. And then check in with your mental emotional state, really shining light on it. That's why we do this is in our opening meditation. We notice our thoughts, we notice our feelings. So we're not trying to push them aside or hide from them. But the, actually, 
air them and know that whatever you're showing up with is okay, right? It'll shift, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable. And then bring your awareness now to your breath. That which gives us access to prana, life force energy within our body. Notice where it's easy to breathe into in the body, maybe your throat, your chest, your belly, right? Or maybe it's difficult to breathe into your belly. And when you breathe, can you feel your breath expand into your back body as well? Perhaps your breath can even uh, move all the way down into your pelvis, into your seat. So let's imagine here as you inhale, so there was all uh, a lovely hole in the top of your head. As you inhale, you're breathing in from the crown of your head, down your spine, all the way to your seat, to your pelvis, to your root. And as you exhale, your breath is moving up from your seat, back out that lovely hole in your head, the crown. Okay, inhale, you're receiving your breath from the crown of your head down to your seat. And as you exhale, you're integrating your breath into your body as it moves up from your seat to your crown. Right? Feel like that on your own. And your breath begins to deepen and lengthen, settling into the seat, the shape, this moment. Let's take one more like this. Hmm. Once you're complete, draw a deep breath in through your nose, filling up. Open your mouth, exhale, let all the breath go. And draw your hands to your heart center, Anjali Mudra, palm to palm in front of your chest. And we'll begin with a shared intention for our yin practice. I vow now to open to awareness for the benefit of all beings. I appreciate its immeasurable value and feel it is possible for me moment to moment, regardless of condition. Take one more clearing breath here. Inhale through your nose. Open your mouth. Exhale. Let it go. <sighs> let your chin fall to your chest. Release your palms. You can take a breath. Maybe rock your head from side to side. And then blink your eyes open as you feel ready. And gaze lift. Beautiful. So the first shape that we'll take today is, is tadpole in yin. It's called tadpole. Uh, we know it as child's pose. So move any props to the side. And um, if you know which variation you want to take, just move right into it. I'll show a few options. One, your knees can be together, feet together. Arms come alongside your body and you rest your forehead. So it's like a little seed pose. And another option is to bring your knees wide, bring your toes to touch. So you're kind of making a diamond, drop your hips to your heels, reach your arms forward. Yeah, and then variations within that to so get more into the upper back and through your chest. You can bend at the elbows, bringing your palms together, drop them behind your head. Right? Or maybe you want to receive some support here. You could take a folded blanket, right? put it under your chest, bring one ear down. And if you have a bolster or some pillows, you could do that. You also could take this rolled blanket and put it between your glutes and your heels if you have any knee discomfort. It supports you there. Yeah, we're gonna uh, take some time here. 
somewhere between four, four and five minutes. So set yourself up so you can resolve to remain still. In, in yin yoga, we're taking the uh, vinyasa, the flow out. And we're holding a relaxed version of the pose in stillness for a prolonged amount of time. And you're finding your edge, so that place between too much effort and not enough. And then you open to whatever arises. Take moment to moment, regardless of condition, right? which is part of our opening intention. Meaning you open to what arises, whether you like it or don't like it. It's comfortable, uncomfortable, easy, hard. Happy, sad. And as we take the movement out of our, our practice, out of our asana, where Yin teaches us the, the wisdom of slowing down. Right? Because when we stop moving, we, we can listen to that inner wisdom. We're not so chaotic or confused or overwhelmed. Right. The yin energy we have within us is stable and unmoving. And it's the hidden aspect of an object or a being, a human, right? the parts you can't see. Whereas yang energy, which is associated with our vinyasa practice, which is also beautiful, right? that's the changing, the moving, the revealing aspects of an object or a being or a person. And if we're all yang and, all, and no yin, then we get sick tired, anxious, stressed. And if we're all yin with no yang, then we're lethargic, we collapse, okay, we don't um, take responsibility for things we need to, to get done. We'll observe here. As you slow down, what is there for you to notice? What wisdom is your body, your mind, or heart trying to share with you? And it goes deeper than us just stretching, right? It's, it's the benefit to the body, but what benefit can you receive to the mind? That's where the real yoga begins. We're going to take um, about another minute here.
Take a deep breath in here, filling up. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. And then inhale to press into your palms, rise up. Good, and then scoot your knees back, walk your feet back, um, and then come down into your belly. And we'll move uh, into Sphinx pose from here, but we'll start in crocodile, right, so that we have several levels. So elbows come wide, stack your palms, rest your forehead on your palms. Just rock your hips from side to side, release your glutes. Bring your feet nice and wide, at least hip distance, and then roll to the pinky toe edges, heels fall open. So stay here or stack your fists. Your chest lifts up here a bit, your head is lifted. Right, or press up to forearms, right, for sphinx pose. Elbows come a little bit in front of your shoulders, and then they're, um, a little bit more narrow than shoulder distance. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> and then palms come to touch or you plant them on the mat, okay? And then let your shoulders slouch towards your ears. And then either let your head fall back, all right, like you're dropping it on the shelf, opening through the front of your throat, all right? Or let your head fall forward, opening through the back of your neck. Whichever variation you choose, open your mouth, release your jaw. I find myself all throughout the day right, playing with my jaw, shifting it from side to side, bringing it forward and back, even massaging the sides of my jaw, because right, I know that that's a place I hold tension, just like in my hips. Right, so you can um, add that to your, your practice during the day, off the mat, if you'd like. All right, your pelvis is heavy, your glutes are relaxed, your pubic bone is on the earth, your chest is drawing forward, your upper back right, is opening here, you might feel it in your upper back, I know I do. And it's like wind behind the sail. Your spine is coming back into its natural alignment. You notice your breath here, it's movement, the movement of your belly. And then you inhale, belly expands, presses into the earth, filling up with breath. As you exhale, your belly, belly hollows, emptying out of breath. All right, we'll take. One more minute here. So if you're happy, stay just as you are. If it's too much of a back bend, lower down a level. Maybe stack fists or to, to crocodile. Or to um, go up a level, plant your palms, straighten your arms for seal pose. So hands can be farther away, right? Or they can start to walk up closer to your hips. Make sure your pubic bone stays on the mat. Yeah, shoulders can still be relaxed. Really beautiful opening through your front body. And then from here, we'll slowly lower down. So elbows come wide, stack your palms, rest your forehead on your hands, rock your hips from side to side. And bend at the knees, drop your ankles from side to side. Ah. 
And send your legs out long and um, extend one arm overhead and then just roll onto your back, please. And yeah. And from here, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Right, you could be in stillness and apanasana. Right, your uh, forearms can wrap around your shins. You can grab your elbows. Right, or just hold your knees and stay still. Or just make some little circles or rock from side to side. Good. And release your legs, bring your knees wide towards your armpits. So option one is gonna stay, gonna be to stay right here. Palms press into your shins, shins press back into your palms, lengthen through your spine. Option two is, is full happy baby. So your knees come outside of your forearms. When you hold the outsides of your feet, draw your knees to the earth. And if your head is lifted and straining, take a pillow or a blanket and put it underneath your head. And it will take two minutes here in happy baby pose. Coming into stillness, right? Another option, right, is to hold your, your thighs, your inner thighs, and your arms can rest on the mat. Yeah. <sighs> right, know that Always, you can let out any audible sighs, exhales. And I see letting out deep sighs is really a wonderful, wonderful action. I, I, I see it as times in which I'm releasing something that is no longer serving me. Whether it's right, a sigh of relief or I'm exhaling some stuck energy. Or choosing to let go of something I'm, I'm gripping or my mind might be gripping to. And deep, long exhales are actually really soothing, grounding and relaxing for the body, for the nervous system. So let those sighs go. <laughs> About half a minute left here. And release your feet, draw both knees back into your chest. And then from here, extend your right leg. Well, actually, let's begin with the right foot bent. Yeah, in both hands, right, interlace right in front of your left knee. Draw your left knee into your chest, right, as close as you can, and soften your shoulders and your arms. Stay here for option one, or extend your right leg out long, option two, and relax your right ankle, relax your right leg. And imagine that we're coming down and gently pressing on the top of your right thigh. So it's moving down towards the earth. We'll just take a minute on each side here. <sighs> Notice where you feel sensation here through the top of your right thigh, through the hip flexors, through the left groin. And then where are you resisting letting go? Where are you holding tension? Maybe it's by actively flexing your feet. Actually, just let them relax here. Maybe you're straining in your shoulders as you pull that left knee in. Where can you relax your arms a little bit? Use gravity to support you. Let's hop into your breath.
And then from here, draw your right knee in to meet the left. Then plant your left foot, left knee bent. Interlace your fingers in front of your right shin. So draw your right knee in towards your chest. Soften your arms and shoulders. Stay here. Extend your left leg. Take about a minute here. Right, and my tendency right away is to engage my left foot and activate my left leg. Relax your left ankle. Let your left leg go. Maybe roll out the roll out the ankles. And then let gravity support you here to draw your right knee to your chest. Let the arms get heavy. Imagine I'm gently pressing down the top of your left thigh. So it's moving down towards the earth. Back of your head heavy. And then draw your left knee in to meet your right knee. Pause here, take an exhale. <sighs> and either roll to one side and press up to sit or rock up to sit. <clears throat> Good, and then turn the long way um, on your mat. We'll take a, a wide leg forward fold. So bring your legs nice and wide. <clears throat> Uh, if you're finding here that as soon as you do this, your pelvis tilts back, right, and your spine is rounding, and then you're going to try to fold forward like this, right, it doesn't really work. So you want your pelvis to tilt forward. So ways you can do that are bend your knees. You could slide a pillow or a prop underneath each knee. And you also could take your blanket and fold it at the, the height that you choose, right, if you're more tight through your hamstrings and give yourself a little more height. And you sit right on the edge of it so your pelvis tilts forward. Okay, so then from there we fold forward. So maybe you come to forearms, maybe your palms stay on the mat. Um, maybe you stack your fists and support your head. Or maybe you create a little uh, a tower of support. Take a pillow. Right, or stacked blankets, bring them in front of you, support your head. And if you are someone who's really mobile, right, uh, you have a lot of flexibility, I actually do encourage you to uh, flex your feet and engage your quads if you're hypermobile. So then you're working on building strength. Right? And if you're someone who is a little bit tighter through your hamstrings, Relax your ankles, relax your legs. Okay, so you find the correct edge for you today. And it's really nice if you can find something to support your forehead. And then we'll take five minutes here, a full five. So this shape, this pose is really good for um, nourishing supporting our immune system, quality of our energy. In our, in our yoga practice, it can really be, be alive and adaptable. So it, it works to benefit us. And it's adaptable to our needs as we go through the different seasons of our lives. Right? We, we grow, we change, our body changes, we age. Right? And so we adapt our practice to meet our needs. 
Right, and if we're all strength, right, if we're all effort, if we're all yang energy, without any flexibility or ease or yin energy, then we're more easily going to get um, injured. We're going to be more stressed. And we'll be more thrown off of our center. And when we can find this balance between effort and ease, stira and sukha, we say in the Yoga Sutras or yin and yang, okay, we find balance within our bodies, within our minds, and in our lives. You're halfway through the pose, if you want to deepen, right, move the prop a little farther from your head or back off, right, do that. And I find that our yin practice really takes you deeper into where you are, right? where you actually are, not where you think you should be or you want to be. And it challenges us to sit in the pure presence of awareness, noticing. It challenges us to sit inside uh, discomfort and just watching the reaction instead of trying to fix or change anything. And it can be really hard, right, Yin? is hard in a different kind of way than the active asana is. But in many ways, it's um, in a more profound and satisfying and beneficial way to the tending to the deeper tissues of the body and also to the deeper issues right within us the possibility to let go, to release, to grow. Just a few more breaths here. Moving slowly, use an inhale to come out of the pose. Lifting your head, but keep it heavy. And start to walk your fingertips back towards your seat. Moving through your spine, draw your head up last. Exhale at the top. Good. And then scoot the prop that you may have in front of you just a little farther forward. Bring your hands underneath your knees and draw your legs together. And bring your feet wide here, just rest your arms on the front of your shins. You can interlace your fingers and let your head fall here. Just notice the effects of that practice in your body. Like what does it viscerally feel like? Are you experiencing sensation? Maybe there's a little tingling, a pulsation somewhere. What effects did that shape have on your mind? And then lifting your gaze as you feel ready. Okay. Now we'll take a hip opener from here. So square pose or um, 
double pigeon, right? Ankle to knee. So staying on the edge of your blanket or whatever prop you chose. Okay. And then bring the right shin in front of the left and walk your knees as close together as you can, feet to the edges um, of the mat. Okay. If you look down, you're creating an equilateral equilateral triangle between your legs. So your heels aren't close in towards your seat, they're farther away. Okay, so you'll stay here, folding forward if you'd like to. Again, finding that prop to support your head. Okay, or take it a little deeper. The right ankle crosses onto the left knee like this makes it more significantly <laughs> for me more intense. Right, and so your pelvis tilts forward, you're lengthening through your spine. And you can stay upright, or if you'd like to, again, you can fold forward. And we'll take um, about three minutes on each side here. Maybe even four. We'll see, we had some hip opening requests. Let's take four minutes. <sighs> really nice to find something to support your forehead so that you can just let the weight of your skull drop. And then let your arms get really heavy. And bring your awareness right to your right hip. And notice if you're resisting letting go. And I find that often I'm tensing up a little bit, just slightly around the hip joint. Can you soften that and allow letting go to even be possible? Even just a little sliver. And then we'll really take some nice time here in silent practice to, to observe emotions, sensation, thoughts, reactions to emotion, sensation, thoughts. Your habits, your patterns, wanting to shift, wanting to move. Right? Sometimes it's wise to shift and sometimes it's a distraction. So you use discernment, wise decision making right, to decide that only you know. And when you always have your breath to invite you back to the present moment. Resting here, noticing, observing, allowing. Open your mouth, release your jaw, keep checking in.
Breathing. Use an inhale to slowly rise up if you fold it forward. And exhale at the top. <sighs> and then we'll switch sides, releasing right leg, left shin comes in front of the left. Walk your knees as close together as you can, feet to the edges of the mat. Okay, heels are away from your seat. Stay here, fold forward. Right, or take double pigeon, left ankle comes right to the outer edge of your knee. Right? Notice how my foot's not inside the knee. This can, uh, it might feel easier, but for the integrity of our knees and our joints, it comes right to the edge. Okay, we'll take four minutes. Some variation. Uh, and you can move slowly, or you can start upright, and maybe forearms come to your prop in front of you, right? and then maybe the head comes down. Really observe what arises here when you first get into the shape. So if there's resistance to this side, or maybe you think you know that this side is always tighter or, or looser than the other, but what if you approach it as a new, fresh experience? And our bodies show up differently every day. And yoga gives us access to our own inner wisdom. So what is there here for you to receive? What messages, what teachings, what aspects of your physical body can you observe? What aspects of your mind? Maybe you notice that your mind is very uh, drawn elsewhere today. You're really distracted or you have a lot of things on your mind that you want to get done and you're anxious about it and maybe none of that is true maybe you're feeling really grounded and um, confident and at, at ease maybe you're feeling both of those things maybe you were feeling grounded and now the sensation in your hip is so intense that it's driving you crazy <laughs> and now you feel um, some of those other emotions right just observe and bring some humor some lightness into it you're already more than halfway through the hold right can you loosen your grip and move into what is arising rather than away from it lean in
Moving slowly as you feel ready, slowly begin to lengthen your spine, rising up. And you then exhale at the top. And then release your legs here. Remove any props that are in front of you. Bring your hands behind you, send your legs out long. And then windshield wiper your legs from side to side. Maybe give them a bounce, releasing the joint. <sighs> Plant your feet and windshield wiper your knees. It's really normal in, in yin yoga to feel like a little bit of a, a dull ache, right, in the area that we were just stimulating. So notice that normal to feel a little aching through your hips here. Right? That means that you are releasing stuck energy, tension. It's part of the practice. I'm naming that because I'm feeling that. <laughs> you can come off of your blanket if you're sitting on one, and then you come all the way down onto your back, please. Um, and we'll prepare for a supine twist here. So have a prop uh, nearby again. I'll do double leg today. So planting your feet. Lift your hips up, move them to the right, and then let both knees fall to the left. Okay, and if you'd, if you'd like to, you can bring a blanket between your knees if that feels good. Okay, and then begin to open your chest, your right shoulder opens. If your right shoulder doesn't comfortably come to the earth, you could put a blanket underneath your shoulder. Okay, if you wanna deepen a little more, you could also top, cross your top leg over the bottom. And then you could bring a blanket underneath your knees and for a bind. And then any arm variation, hands can rest on your belly, you can come to a T, cactus your arms, do whatever feels best here. Let's see, we'll take about three minutes on each side here. Settling in, finding your edge. And then resolving to remain still. In this stillness, you give possibility for the body to settle, the body to um, soften so that it's able to release the tension, the physical tension or the emotional or stuck energy. That room, we're constantly moving, your body is gripping, holding on. And there's no, it's not possible to, to let go of that energy, that tension. Or not as easily possible. No, anything's possible, right? <laughs> But here we're moving into the superficial layers of the body, the tissues, fascia, joints. So stimulating those areas as we rest for a prolonged amount of time, which is where we hold that stuck energy tension. Choose to either let your breath be natural or to consciously deepen it. And when you're feeling distracted, discomfort, I really encourage you to deepen and lengthen your breath and to bring your awareness there.
One more breath here. And then we'll slowly draw knees back through the center, plant both feet, lift your hips, bring your pelvis back to center and just take a breath. And then we'll switch sides, bend your feet, lift your hips up, scoot them to the left. You could bring your Prop over to the right side of your body now. And let both knees fall to the right. Both knees stack. Again, you could bring a blanket between your legs, say, or you could cross the top leg over the bottom, find that bind. The left arm opens now, shoulder lowers towards the earth. If it doesn't comfortably come, come there, place a blanket underneath it or a prop. Arms to a T, cactus arms, or rest them on your belly. Unwinding your spine here, really notice where are you experiencing sensation rather than saying just in my back, where in your back? Is it in the lumbar spine, right? The low back above the sacrum? Is it in your thoracic spine, right? Behind, and take your mid back by um, your heart, behind your heart. Rise it up in your cervical spine, around your neck. And where's your gaze? Is it dropped in the opposite direction? That's more opening for your neck, opposite direction of your knees, right? Or straight up or towards your knees. And what's happened to the shape of your breath here? Are you able to breathe as deeply? Or has your breath become a little more shallow? And just observe. And approaching each moment in your practice as new and fresh, you can learn to approach each moment of your day as new and fresh versus operating on autopilot, thinking you know what's going to happen next. Right? When we think in, in this way, life becomes a little mundane, a little boring. But there comes excitement and energy and enthusiasm and curiosity when we approach life with each moment in new and fresh and what is going to happen. I can't wait to see. Wait to see what's going to happen next. And that'll enrich not only your yoga practice, not your, only your life, but the lives of those around you. Teaching them through your action. A few more breaths here. And 
then slowly make your way back into your back, knees come through to center, plant your feet, lift your hips, bring your pelvis back to center, pause. And then hug your knees into your chest here for a moment and take some circles, right? You could circle the knees wide, one hand on each knee, drawing the knees apart. And then move in the other direction. Uh, and then we'll prepare here for a final rest, sending your legs out long on the mat. Bring your feet at least hip distance apart. Let your ankles fall open. Give your armpits room to breathe. Okay, add any layers or any weight to your body. You can put a blanket over you, a pillow under your knees, maybe even something over your eyes. And you let the weight of your body be supported by the earth. We let go of any final control here, any effort. And your breath be natural. Open now to receiving benefits, your practice, right? integrating them in a cellular, energetic level, letting them marinate and become a part of your system, a part of the whole. Resting here in Shavasana. Complete form of surrender. If you'd like to stay here longer and you have that space in uh, your day, you're welcome to. You know, you slowly begin to reawaken, deepening your breath, and inviting gentle movement back into your body with the toes and fingers. And little knees. Draw knees into chest and roll to one side. And press up to our final seat. Sit tall, let your eyes close. And 
And once you've arrived in your final seat, observe the resonance, the apple of your practice. And how is that being integrated, translated to you now? Do you feel a vibration, a pulsation? Maybe you feel a sense of ease, connection. There's no right or wrong way to experience this, just notice. And draw a deep breath in through your nose, filling up. Open your mouth, exhale, let it go. And draw your hands into your heart space, Anjali Mudra. And we pause for a moment to honor the wisdom you have within you. To honor this ancient practice of yin yoga, where we provide the space and the stillness for us to access this inner wisdom. And if you'd like to dedicate your practice to benefit someone else, bring a person, group of people, or even a place, an animal to mind. And then bowing it to heart, we seal our practice. May your practice be a means of inner listening and becoming. Together we say, Namaste. Namaste. And have a beautiful rest Thank of your you. day. Bye. Bye.